the house. Was it a comfortable um, place to be? It was livable. It wasn't. Uh, it's different environment, different culture. I mean, there was no roads or pavements in this in this village. Most of the houses just had sheets over the doors and windows and corrugated yeah. roofs. Um, don't use toilet paper. Um, uh, very basic foods. Uh, very very. We're so privileged. Uh, Mandy, you came up with a, a, a devised a plan that we can't really get into now because but we, we can talk about the, the moment when you had to go to get your passport or your visa I should say stamp. Yes. And and you were in the back of the car as I recall with Smith May and Mustafa yeah. was there with his brother. Into town, they leave the car, what happens next? Uh, basically, um, I had packed a few items in my handbag. Mandy had told me very, very briefly that morning, uh, no one's coming to get you, Louise. You're going to have to get that child out yourself because the area that he lived in was the most dangerous and volatile place in Syria. You couldn't get anybody to go uh, in. Nobody would go in, mm -hmm. and we had the same problem with the officials in, in other parts of Syria. They wouldn't go down to the region. So I sat, he had got out of the car to renew my visa, and I, said, I sent Mandy a text message and said, Mandy, I have a chance to run with no passport. And I got a message back saying, to the words, sort of, feck it, run. <laughs> yeah. So I grabbed May's hand. It wasn't fake. No, it wasn't. No. <laughs> no. Okay, we live, we live in the first night. Go on. <laughs> trying to be polite. Yeah. <laughs> I seen the, word, word, the first word I ran. Anyway, I grabbed May's hand. I seen it, and uh, literally, I opened the door, and there's a taxi there. Jumped into the taxi, jumped on the floor. Uh, the taxi, I speak a little bit of Arabic, so I told him in Arabic to go, to go, go. So he drove um, about two minutes away from the immigration office, and. Um, I remember at that stage I'd rang my friend in uh, Cyprus, she had a Syrian husband who spoke Arabic, and we asked the gentleman who was driving the car, would he drop us to... I remember I had done my research while I was in the house, nothing else to do, Brian, and I, I had seen a, 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 a village, sorry, not a village, a city called Alibo, which was about an hour from where I was based, yes. and I asked the taxi driver to go to Alibo, and he wouldn't, he brought me to a bus station. So the bus station, I was screaming, and I said, please go, 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 yellow, yellow, go, and no, he wouldn't. Yeah. So basically I pulled May's hand again, said, May, run, we ran through a bus station, the taxi man was asking for his money, we kept going, I went to a taxi rank, the force got up very young and chose second taxi, jumped in, threw myself on the ground and um, he asked for money in Arabic and I just showed him my wallet, I had 350 euro and I showed him my wallet and he just started driving. Uh, I got my friend to speak to him again, he said you're safe, well you're not safe, he said he's going to bring you to Damascus which is the city, he said have you got the hijab on, I said yes, he said well just keep going, it's going to be a five hour drive. Do not speak a word of English to anybody. Look straight ahead and we pray to God you get there, Louise. So, Ryan, we went through nine checkpoints on that route and nobody stopped us. Good Lord. Um, the most dangerous checkpoints were the ones where we had um, security. In Syria, nobody knows who's killing who. Um, so I actually was relieved when we went to a, a border control that was operated by soldiers in yeah. the green combats. The most dangerous ones were the, the men with the shorts and the jeans. The paramilitary types. Yeah, yeah. and nobody knows who they are. And I went through two of them, and that was my most anxious time. Ultimately, you needed to get across the, the, the nighttime border. This was the, probably the most hazardous, if you can have yes. even a more hazardous moment. Um, you were going from where to where that, at that nighttime journey? Um, do you mean on, on that route in the taxi? No, later on, at, at the, when it was just you and the, and the fellas guiding you. Yes, oh. okay. Um, that was going from Damascus to Lebanon. To Lebanon, yes. and this was freedom. Yes. On the other side of yes. that. Tell me about that that particular leg of the journey. Okay, so we had gone through legalities, trying to get to every legality. May was in stop list, sure. Uh, basically, and we had to, uh, met every legality, and we went through every legal route, and we just kept hitting brick walls. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go for Plan B. Which that was myself and Mandy had been. Uh, we got people smugglers uh, to bring us to bring us over the mountains between uh, Syria and Lebanon. So, how many people brought you over? Um, it was an arduous journey, and um, we got a phone call to say we're moving. So, I was taken to, um, basically to a rendezvous point. Uh, one gentleman picked us up in a saloon car, drove us an hour outside Damascus. We were put in a safe house for about three hours. The sun went down, and then a 4x4 four four drove up with three men. Um, we started on an hour's journey up the mountains, and it was getting dark at that stage. And after he couldn't go, he couldn't go any, any further. Um, he stopped and we had to then walk. He just said bye. The two other men said bye. We got out and uh, he said, we're walking. So we start walking. It was pitch dark and we literally climbed over mountains, May and I, for two hours. Um, I think it was three or four gorillas. Uh, they all had the headgear on and the handguns. Um, they, there was always two guys at least around, four to run, yeah. um, at a higher point. And they were communicating with you know, the lighters the, with the lights on the bottom of them. Yeah. They're communicating with them and the guys would come down and swap every so often. 
Um, halfway over, um, one guy stole my money. I only had 100, so a euro. Joke. No, but he asked me in Arabic for money or we're not going any further, so I give him anything. So there you How go. How was May in the middle of all this? May, I, I don't believe how May. I don't. I never believe it. I don't understand. In the hell. dark, strange She's men, lighters old. over it mountains. It was pitch dark. She we was literally, her we mama climbed. Mama. We climbed up sheer sheer mountain faces and back down inclines and we walked and walked. The arms were scratched off both of us. May fell a few times, got back up. She was asking me, was I okay, Ryan? And she kept going. She was translating, she speaks fluent Arabic. She was translate, translating for me um, to these guys who were speaking to her. Um, I fell and sprained my ankle at one stage. I thought it was broke and that was, that was the most scariest part. Got back up and eventually after two, two and a half hours, we got to uh, an incline and one guy said to me in Arabic, that's Lebanon and that's Syria. Just keep going. And uh, we got down eventually and there was a four by four waiting for us. They bungled us in uh, and on the journey to our safe house in Lebanon, May said to me, Mammy, there's loads of handguns here on the floor. I just said, May, don't touch anything, just keep, just keep looking ahead. What day of the week was that? Oh, <laughs> that was the tourist day. Tourist day? Yes. Within, you could effectively say hours, you were in a GAA club at home. Saturday night. Saturday night she arrived home. You know, having a glass of orange saying, yes. you'll, you'll never believe the week I've had. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, really. Exactly. <laughs> what was it like getting out at Dublin Airport? It, so uh, I've met your aunties, you've got about 212 <laughs> aunties. There was, they're all, I met them earlier on. Uh, and, you, you know, you're obviously good fun as a family. Yes. Uh, what was it like arriving into the arms of that it was family? It surreal. I, I honestly, um, I think, I said to myself during the whole experience, um, I'm going to get May home because I, I thought I had cancer as well and I think I, I said to myself, Ryan, at least if I get her back safe to Ireland, she'll be okay. Yeah. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't bear the thoughts of having to stay in that country and live like that. Are you worried about her now? That's what my worry is. Yeah, that she's if, if, going to need to yeah. make sense of counselling and treatment and, and we are going down there. And what about her safety? I mean, are you thinking about witness protection? Yes. Are you, yeah, you yeah, are? Yeah. Yes. We're talking with the guard, she a You are. Because would, you'd worry that if, he did, if Mustafa yes. did what he did then, What's to stop them? They have been fantastic, the Garda Shikana. They've been at the house Every regularly day, since, yeah. um, since it happened, since okay. they came back. Um, short term, they have given us security. We know to me different security tips. Yeah. But long term, we think we'll move. Right? move help. She's a beautiful child, by the way. Gorgeous. Uh, the pleasure of meeting. She, yeah, you can see why. <laughs> yes. She's gorgeous, gorgeous yeah. manner and she's, yes. she seems happy, but I presume shook as hell. Yes, she's going to need counselling. She's yeah. very clingy. Yeah, she well, doesn't trust that. many. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and then it comes to most, one of the striking things about your story, Louise, that more than anything else, is you can bring babies and children yes. over and back over borders, no passport, yes. half People a passport. Don't know yes, Ryan, that's myself. It's pretty scary, isn't it? Yeah, Mandy and I are going to fight tirelessly now to improve Change. passport yes. regulations <laughs> within the European community because Mandy and I had followed the route he'd taken May. And nobody, nobody stopped us in fight aside. Yeah. Nobody. I mean, we also had main stop list, Ryan. Yeah. Stop list basically um, stops you taking a child from the country it's resident in without the signature and, and consent of each parent. And she was on a cancelled passport. And, on, and the problem on a cancelled passport, yes. was, which we, she got through the board. Mm. How are you this evening? Elated. I <laughs> Absolutely. Betcha. I don't. It's what surreal. A story like that. It's, it's, it is extraordinary. Well, you were saying something there. Um, I just don't believe, I mean, I just don't believe I got her back. I, I think deep down I really felt I'd never get her back. Because everyone told us it was impossible, it. it was mission impossible. They told us we couldn't do it, yeah. but we did. Syria is not part of the Hague Convention and it's a very, very strict Muslim state and there was the war going on. May and I have seen things that nobody should see mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, we just done it against the odds. Well, <laughs> I just feel like I've watched a film. Uh, honestly, it's such an amazing story, and you're two very admirable women, I have to say. It's Thank just you, a stunning, Thank stunning story. Thanks for sharing it with us tonight. You're welcome. Louise Thank and Mandy. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Unbelievable. Whew. Well, in a list, in a list of the top 50 best-selling Irish singles of last year, my next guests have five entries. Their success here and growing fan base abroad is a result of their hard work and constant touring. In fact, a few hours ago, 